Okay, members, John O'Dowd has given notice of an urgent oral question to the Minister of Health. I would remind members that if they wish to ask a supplementary question, they should raise continually in their places. The member who tabled the question will be called automatically to ask a supplementary. Clerk, please read the question. To ask the Minister of Health whether the Regulation and Quality Improvement Authority has inspected or been asked to inspect Craigavon Area Hospital following recent COVID-19 outbreaks. And I call the Minister of Health. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. Um, firstly, I would like to express my deepest sympathies to the loved ones of those who have passed away recently at Craig Avon Area Hospital with COVID-19. My thoughts are with them, and their grief sadly highlights the ever-present threat that this pandemic poses. Mr Speaker, at all times, citizens should expect the highest standards of infection control to be in place across our health care facilities. And in light of these recent clusters, the Southern Trust's immediate priorities are to care for affected patients and staff and prevent further spread of the virus. This morning, I chaired a discussion with the senior management of the Southern Trust and the Public Health Agency to make my expectations clear on this very serious matter. I have been assured that everything that needs to be done in relation to infection prevention and control is being done and that support is available for families, patients and staff. As I said last week, a thorough investigation is required to provide patients and brief families with the answers they are entitled to. I can confirm that investigation will be in the form of a Level 3 serious adverse incident, which I have asked the Trust to initiate immediately. This will be independently chaired and its findings will be made public. Mr Speaker, it is important to be very clear at this stage that whilst we want a thorough investigation, we simply cannot put a timeline on this until we have greater clarity around the underlying causes which the investigation will provide. During this morning's meeting, I raised the role of the RQIA. As members will know, they undertake inspections of acute hospitals under, under its hospital inspection programme and conduct rolling programmes of hygiene inspections and inspections of augmented care services. Whilst the immediate focus is now on the investigation, I have asked that the RQIA play an important part in that. In conclusion, Mr Speaker, there are undoubtedly questions that will have to be answered by the Trust in relation to these outbreaks once the immediate threat has been brought under control. The necessary steps are underway and any lessons are being shared across all health and social care trusts as they emerge. COVID-19 remains a lethal and highly infectious virus. Can I call John O'Dowd for a supplementary question? Uh, Minister, uh, thank you for your answer uh, to my question. Minister, we have three outbreaks, and just before I came into the chamber, a fourth death was confirmed in relation to the COVID-19 outbreaks in Craigavon Hospital. We have 17 members of staff in the haematology ward who have tested positive. We have a total of 56 staff who are isolating as a result of being in close contact uh, with COVID-19 or a COVID-19 infected person. Minister, when is it the time to call in the RQIA? Surely they should have been in the hospital before this, and giving an independent inspection of the measures put in place to prevent the spread of this infection across the hospital. Well, I use my term differently because we're told these three outbreaks are not connected. But I am not aware of any other acute hospital uh, in this region which has had a COVID-19 outbreak, which raises serious concerns for me in relation to Craigavon Area Hospital and how infection control has been managed. And the only way that can be reassured is if a body like the RQIA, which is legislated to inspect hospitals, does so. Though I do welcome the Minister announcing this morning there's going to be an independent investigation, but we need answers now to prevent further outbreaks. No, and I, I thank the member for, for a supplementary, and I, I share his concern um, because the number of outbreaks that we've seen across our, our, our health and social care service haven't seen anyone lose their life. And what we've heard today in regards to another life loss is, is a death too many. And I stand here as Minister saying that. And that's why I chaired this morning's meeting in regard to the work that the Trust is currently doing to prevent that every safeguard is in place. That's why they've got the, the additional protocols in regards to ensuring that the inspections of PPE, support for staff and support for patients and support for all those families are in place. In regards for, for the role of the RQIA, it has uh, 
an ability or, or a responsibility to undertake inspections of acute hospitals under its hospital inspection programme and not conducts the rolling programme. This is a very specific targeted piece of work. That's why I've asked uh, the Trust to implement the serious adverse incident in inspection and get that piece of work going now. And, and speaking with, with both the Trust Chief Executive and the Chair this morning, they are fully aware of the seriousness of this outbreak in the Craig Alvin Area Hospital and taking all steps that they can to support the staff, to support the families and to support the patients who need the support at this moment in time. And I call Pam Cameron. And uh, uh, thank the Minister for being here in tents for this urgent oral this afternoon. And obviously our thoughts are with those families who have, have been plunged into grief at this time. And it is very um, disheartening to hear that there is a fourth patient who has lost their life from that um, haematology ward at Craig Avenue Hospital. Minister, can I ask you um, how the test, trace and protect um, initiative and the Stop COVID NI app, what role has it played in, uh, in particular in relation to Craig Avon Area Hospital outbreaks and also uh, do you have a percentage from positive tests that are showing to be asymptomatic cases and um, if that is the case how are you planning to combat that complacency that's out there and the conspiracy theories behind this pandemic? the Deputy Chair of, of the Health Committee for her questions. In, in regards to, to these specific outbreaks, because they are hospital-based, we can do you know, a, a lot of very intense work actually through the support of the Trust uh, and the PHA as an integral part as to how they manage and oversee this outbreak management as well. So they are there. They're already part of that incident management team that, who are meeting daily to make sure that they can do all they can to support the Trust and its officials at this moment in time. In regards to the specific question, um, in regards to asymptomatic uh, patients coming out from, from the, the, the test system, I think that's one of the things our test system is actually identifying, is those people who are asymptomatic, who may not be showing symptoms but tell, still have the potential uh, to spread COVID-19. We are indicating that. And, and concerningly, um, over the last number of days, we're seeing a dramatic increase in the number of people who are testing positive for COVID-19. And in the member's question, she, she, she refers to you know, the complacency that has set in. There's an, there's an art of we're testing more people, therefore we're finding more positives. That's true. But also the percentage of people who we are finding positive is also increasing. So uh, you know, in, in August and July, we were seeing less than 0.2% per, per of the people tested actually testing positive. In the past three days, we're seeing 3% of everybody tested is actually testing positive. So that percentage of positive tests across the, the, the increased number of people that we're testing is actually increasing as well, which is a concern for us. We're also seeing a change in de de demographic, that it's younger people are testing positive. So the asymptomatic carriers, the, the people who we need to really ask and ask to support us in our public health message and the social distance and good hand hygiene face coverings is even more important today than it was uh, in the early days of this outbreak. I call Colin Giller new. Um, um, and I thank the Minister for coming today to address this very serious situation. And it is particularly concerning that we have an outbreak in haematology ward where we should have the utmost layers of protection at any time, even, even short of COVID. But could I ask the Minister uh, what precautions he has taken to ensure that the virus is now contained within the, the affected areas? Um, and I thank, thank the Chair for, for, um, for, for his question. In regards to, to the, the update we received this morning from uh, the, the joint meeting that I chaired between Trust and PHA, between infection control nurses, infection control specialists, the haematology consultants, the entire team across the Southern Trust are involved to make sure that every precaution that they can put in place in regards to, to supporting the families, but also to support the staff who are, are finding this a very difficult time as well as they go about their daily business, but they also, you know, as that thought, is there anything more I could have done? Is there anything more I should have done? So the inspection, we have on-site on inspections within the hospital to make sure that all protocols are being kept up and should be kept up, are strengthened, and that, that reinforcement piece is also being done as well. In regards to, to managing the infection with, within the unit itself, uh, PHA are currently doing a, a genotyping 
of all those people who have tested positive to the, so they can see the specific um, chain of infection for each case so we can determine exactly where, where, where it came from for each case as well. So that sort of enhanced, uh, I suppose, investigation um, so we can see where the chain come from uh, to see where else it could be within the hospital if there is a risk of that actually happening. But that's why you know there is so many, I think, as Mr. O'Dowd said, you know, that's why we're seeing so many staff self-isolating at this moment in time, why we're advising patients to self-isolate should they be in, in contact or have been contacted, to make sure we break these chains of infection, to make sure that we can get this outbreak as under control as quickly as possible. And I call Justin McNulty. Thank you, Minister. Thank you for your statement today. And I welcome the designation of a serious adverse incident, and I welcome your commitment to uh, an immediate and thorough investigation. Six months into this pandemic, and I recognise the duress that our medical staff are experiencing, and the increased strain that these outbreaks are going to put on the staff in, in Craigavon is enormous. That said, four families are grieving. The McShane family, Alice McShane's family, are grieving, they're grief stricken and angry. John Fleming's family are grief stricken and really angry. I spoke at length with Yvonne Stewart over the weekend, who is beside herself with, with the anger and with grief. She does not want her father's life to have been lost in vain, and her, his final wishes were that she take this up and she do something about it. And the two families who are still nameless, they're going to be grief, grief stricken and uh, beside themselves with uh, hurt. Can you commit, Minister, to meet with Yvonne Stewart to ensure that her, her father's death is not in vain and ensure that this does not happen again and the lessons will be learned to prevent any other family going through the pain that they are experiencing? We're remembering that these four families went to the haematology ward free from COVID to a ward where there should have been a ring of steel around those families, around those patients to protect their, their loved ones. Thank you, Minister. In regard to, to meeting Yvonne, I, I, you know, I, I'll meet Yvonne and I think what, what the private office has said, said that train in motion because if anybody heard Yvonne speak on Friday afternoon in regards to, to her father, the, the support um, that she expected from a health point of view that, that her father was going to receive, and to hear the final words that he asked, I, I don't think there's anyone in this house, there's anyone across the health and social care system, and there's anyone in the Southern Trust could not be moved. When you hear a daughter's commitment to her father and her father's last wish, and I think, you know, as the member indicated, I, I'll meet with the families, and as I say, the private office has said that, that in train, and that's why I moved this morning when I had that meeting to move to the serious adverse incident with the independent chair to make sure we get to the bottom of, of those questions. But the answers to those questions won't bring back the people who have lost their lives. But what they can do and what they should do is ensure that this incident is not repeated across any of our other trusts or again in Craig Avenue Hospital. And, and I'll, give, you know, I'll give the House that commitment because the dedication of our staff are, are there. The dedication of our staff has been unquestioned um, over the last six months during this pandemic. And, and today, I, those members of staff feel this hurt and feel this loss as much, I think, as, as I do standing here today as Minister. And I call on Alan Chambers. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm sure, Mr. Speaker, today the thoughts of this entire House are with uh, those grieving families. Uh, I think also uh, our thoughts would be with the families who have patients currently in that hospital. It must be a, a really stressful time for them and for their family member. But it must also be a particularly stressful time for the staff of the hospital and certainly our thoughts are with them as they try to bring this uh, outbreak uh, under control. The message here uh, is that this virus is no respecter of either location or person. If it can overcome all the infection controls in a hospital environment, would the Minister agree that it is more important than ever 
that the general public continue to follow the advice and the regulations to the absolute limit to avoid any more grieving families. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, I thank the, I thank the member for, for his sentiment because it is a, it, it's that message that we've been putting across from the Department of Health, the executive has been putting across, and every member of this House has been putting across, you know, where this virus goes and how this virus spreads is in our hands. This, this virus doesn't follow any plan, any protocol, um, but our actions, the actions of the general public, have a direct effect as to where this virus spreads and how quickly it can spread um, across across our province. And I think the member makes the valid point in regards that is no no respecter of either person, profession, or or workplace. And that's why I just asked, and again I'll re reinforce that message. Just ask the members of the general public to help us combat COVID-19 by reinforcing and repracticing th the steps that got us to the place where we were in July and August, where we were seeing a very low number of positive cases and a low number of deaths, because any, any life lost, Mr Speaker, in regards to COVID-19, especially in this instance, is a, is, a life, um, is a life too many lost to COVID-19. Thank you, Minister. Before I bring anybody else in, could I actually urge members, notwithstanding the very serious nature of the discussion at hand, but there are quite a number of members who do wish to ask the question, so could I ask members to move quickly to their questions? Thank you. And I call Andrew Muir. Uh, Mr Speaker, and I would echo the words of other members in terms of our thoughts, first and foremost, with the families of those bereaved as a result of this horror which we are enduring in 2020, which is COVID-19, and also for the staff, which uh, Alan Chambers has been um, talking about in terms of the work that they are doing. Obviously, the first focus has to be about ensuring that we stop the spread of the virus, but what impact does it also have upon the services being delivered, um, particularly as a result of the amount of staff having to self-isolate as a result of it? I, you know, and again, you know, I, I share, share the member's concern. But in regards to the service provision um, in Craig Avon, the, the focus of that hospital must be at this time in bringing this outbreak under control. So in regards to there are other services will be affected and reduced while we do this, while we make sure um, staff are supported and there's enough staff uh, in place across the existing services so they continue. So it will have a knock-on effect in regards to the number of staff who are currently self-isolating. But we must take that procedure. We must take those steps, and we must do that now to make sure that we get this outbreak under control and break the chain of infection. So, the the adverse effect of, of some services being lost in Craig Avon are such and in place in the Southern Trust's management that they are doing it under a managed risk procedure. So, if there is additional risk uh, to any other provision or any other services, those services will be stepped back because that's what we need to do to get this outbreak under control. I call Claire Sugden. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and uh, thank you, Minister, for responding. Um, in my experience, the remit of the RQIA is quite limited, especially in respect to direct uh, patient complaints and enforcement. Um, would the Minister give his view on their responsibilities, and does he have any plans to strengthen their remit so that maybe we could um, feed into this uh, bigger issue? Yeah. And uh, again, you know the. The member rightly highlights the role of RQIA within, within the, the hospital setting. While they will be involved in the serious adverse in, incident, um, uh, as, that, as that investigation goes forward, um, they do take a proactive role um, in inspections. Could they be doing more? I think they themselves would like to be doing more. And we've seen that across a number of incidents recently where the RQIA have been involved and have been cited. Current legislation does hamper them. Um, and some of the things that they would like to do, some of the things that their inspectors would like to do, but, but while that legislation is in place, so it's something that I've committed to do um, in recent months as well, even in regards to where we saw outbreaks in care homes, that that regulation quality and improvement function of the RQIA should be strengthened and expanded. Call Jerry Carl. 
clear uh, answer so far. And I want to give my sympathies to everybody in Craig Avon who has contracted the virus and, and to the families of those who, who have passed away. Uh, given the, the cases in Craig Avon and the figures we heard uh, yesterday or this morning that there may be um, a per head population when we have twice uh, the number of cases here than in England, uh, does, is the Minister confident that um, the executive is on the right path to eliminate this virus? Uh, uh, again, in the, in the minister's, or sorry, in the, mem in the members' comments, um, the steps that the executive have taken, I think, were proportionate to where we were seeing the spread of COVID at, at, at any point in time. Um, will we have to look at the possibility of localised lockdowns? Should we not get these number of cases and the expansion of cases under control? I think that's something the executive will have to seriously consider. There has been issues raised in regards, you know, local. Council area was too large. Um, I, I've asked the PHA and our own statistics team to look at that as a postcode area as well. Should we have to bring in enforcement measures at that more localised area as the way we can, we can manage those outbreaks? Because we can't keep on in this trajectory. What we are seeing now, and the member will see you know, from our dashboard when it's public, we are published. Uh, we are seeing an increase in number uh, in Belfast. We are now seeing a number of uh, in increased uh, cases in regards to ABC Council, where Craig Avon Hospital is situated, but that's connected to once we have an outbreak, contact tracing kicks in, so there's more tests, there's more more positive. So that's to be that's to be expected, but it's, it's always about taking that managed approach as to where we specifically see if we see a localised outbreak and that being continued and not coming under control, I would recommend and will be bringing to the executive the need to look at. Uh, more localised enforcement or guidance or protocols to make sure that we can support those people in that geographical area to bring the game and break the chains of infection that we've seen in the past. I call Jonathan Buckley. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I would like to be associated with remarks so, th so far in sympathising with grieving families. Uh, I think this is a day we all prayed would not come again. We're now looking at deaths within our hospital, and there's concern for patients and staff in Craig Avon Area Hospital. But I too have concerns, and I know that these bereaved families are for foremost entitled to answers and this, the investigation that the Minister has announced. I, I welcome to find out the root causes of what has happened. I'm firmly of the belief that that should be independently uh, led, not just chaired. And I would ask the Minister perhaps to maybe elaborate on the type of investigation that he's outlining. Does independently chaired mean independently led to ensure that the complete confidence of both those families and also to allow our health service to benefit from outside expert advice in, in, in their post-analysis of what actually happened and went wrong at Craig Avenue Area Hospital? Thank you. you know, um, in regards to, to a differential between uh, independently chaired or independently led, I recognise no, re recognise no difference for an independently chaired serious adverse incident at level three has the ability to do exactly that. So when the terms of reference are appointed, when the chair is appointed, they go and do their piece of work to whatever level they need to with the full open access and with the full support of my office in regards to getting uh, to the root cause analysis. Uh, of this outbreak and why those lives were lost in Craig Avon to, to make sure, as the member says, to make sure this is not repeated anywhere else across our health and social care system. We call Linda Dillon. I was contacted by a care, domicile care worker in the community today and asked why patients, why patients who are leaving the hospital and going into care home settings are being tested before they go into those care home settings, patients who are going back out into the community where care workers and, and district nurses and so on have to win, they are not being tested. So we should actually ask why, why is that not happening in order to protect those staff in the same way that the homes, the care homes are being protected. And I would also like to be associated with the comments around sympathies with the families and also support for the staff within Craig Avenue Area Hospital. The, the testing programme that we have in, in hospitals is always constantly under review. Uh, one of the, the concerns that was, was had very early on was the transfer between hospitals to care homes, so there was an automatic testing programme and protocol put into place. For those re members returning to the general public or, re or general pub returning to their own homes, there currently isn't uh, a testing protocol put in place. 
um, because of the incidents in regards to time we'd have to wait and results coming back. But it's something, as I say to the members, constantly kept under review in regards to some of the last as well that is actually looked at in regards to Craig Avon Hospital, uh, in regards to the support of those members and families currently associated with this outbreak. Nicole Pat Cadney. Much, Mr. Speaker, thank you very much, Minister, for your question so far. And I also um, like to pass on my sympathies to those families as well that find themselves in the situation of lost a loved one. Minister, um, I, I can't confirm if this is right or not, but on Saturday night I was told that the Chief Medical Officer was in Belfast along with the Chief Constable of the RUC going around public houses. Uh, I need to ask you what you had said there, is that, and I know, I don't want this to make this political to you, that you would do everything in your car, and I want to give you everything that I can in order to support you, but I don't think that is the best use of our Chief Medical Officer when we were having a pandemic outbreak in Craig Avon Hospital. I think time could have been better spent. Um, and what, what I will say to the member, how we can, how we challenge and combat this virus is multifaceted. Um, the fact that the Chief Medical Officer took time out of his own Saturday night uh, to accompany the Chief Constable of the PSNI around a number of areas in Belfast and to highlight those public houses and those drinking establishments that were in breach of COVID-19. And that's some of the, the locations we're actually seeing um, where that younger population is gathering. If there's people there, if there's facilities and if there's locations that are breaching COVID-19 regulations, those places need to take on their full responsibility as well. So in regards to the best use of the Chief Medical Officer's time, I've seen a man that has committed hours, days, months and weeks into combating um, this virus over the last six months, which I think goes far and beyond what many other people holding a similar role across these islands have done as well. So I, 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 I wouldn't agree with the member's assertion that his time could be better spent, because the fact that he spent his own Saturday night going out round and challenging some of those who were breaching COVID-19 protocols, I think was a dedication and a, a testimony to the man and how he spent his time that could have been spent with his own family. Um, I too would like to add my name to the condolences to those families of loved ones um, who have died at Craig Avon. And I'm all too aware through communications in my office of the anxiety and ongoing distress um, that exists with staff and patients that are there and their families. Minister, given in light of the circumstances, and I welcome the, the um, reference to an investigation. Does the Minister agree with me now would be a good time to lift additional burden off Craig Avon Area Hospital? And in that, I'm referencing the fact that Daisy Hill ED was closed at the outset of COVID, and those people who would have attended Daisy Hill are now extra traffic who are making their way to Craig Avon. It is anticipated that Daisy Hill would open at the end. The Daisy Hill ED would open at the end of this month. Given these circumstances, would it be prudent to step forward and make that happen immediately and safely? I don't want to, I don't want to tie the two issues um, together in regards to open and provision and open facilities, um, in regards to the serious adverse incident that I've declared today and the fact we have, uh, we have seen people lose their lives. The commitment from the Trust uh, is to open that facility at the end safely has been managed safely due to the access of staff during to make sure the provision and the facilities are in a safe working area as well and in a safe working condition that we can support staff and patients as they use it. So I don't think this is a reason or a rationale as to expedite that, that process or that decision which has been made by the Trust and I'll support them in making sure that we do get it open as quickly as possible but at the time they have decided as is safe to do so. Okay, we're really out of time now, so can I call Paul Gibbon? Can I too associate, associate my name with the sentiments being expressed in sympathy to the families? The Minister ha has said that um, there will be services adversely affected in Craig Avon Area Hospital as a result of measures taken now to, to limit the spread of COVID-19. And we have deaths directly attributed to COVID-19, but we also have deaths directly attributable to the consequences 
and we have an impact on patients as a consequence of the measures taken to contain COVID-19. When will we have a system in place whereby all patients are having their needs met, which currently isn't the case as a result of COVID-19? And is it sustainable to have the, the period of self-isolation for significant members of staff if that is replicated in other hospitals and that impact it is going to have? So, this is a difficult task that the health service have in managing and, and taking proportionate measures. But how is all of that being dealt with through this managed risk assessment that the minister has alluded to in terms of services at Craig Avon Area Hospital? Um, so, in regards to, to the period of self-isolation for staff, that's crucial. It's crucial that they follow that period of self-isolation to make sure anyone who is carrying the virus or has been infected by the virus doesn't spread it to other patients, because that's the last thing. I think any of us want to see in a hospital setting. So it's not just a matter of rushing staff back in to a provision where they could actually be causing greater risk um, than they solve. In regards to, to the rebuilding programme, we've made it very clear across the Department of Health, across the trusts, we've done that in a three-monthly programme uh, that has been published, and due, the next step is due to be published uh, towards the end of this month for October, November, de December, because it is a gradual increase in the provision that we do provide. That's why we announced you know, the regionalised approach to orthopaedics and elective care surgeries to reinvigorate and get the health service back onto a foot and where we're supporting all our patients equally. But the member has to be aware of the risk that does come associated with COVID because we've now seen the danger and, the, unfortunately, the high risk that it does present should it get embedded and into a hospital facility. And that's why we have always taken that cautious approach to make sure that every step of everything we do keeps COVID out and away from those patients who need the full support and rigour of the hospital service. Unfortunately, what we've seen in Craig Avon and the loss of life that we've seen there is something that I deeply regret, something that the Trust deeply regrets, and something that the staff themselves will regret as well. And that concludes this item of business, members. Thank you all. Uh, could members just take a raise for a couple of minutes just to change the table here? Thank you.